Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, and I'm here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are so happy to be here tonight so happy. to talk about Seeking Sister Wife, latest episode, season five, episode, I don't know, six, episode six. Yeah, there's a lot to get into. But yeah. before we do, we must remind you, our dear raccoons, to please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast which means we say a lot of bad words we have stupid opinions and we're not afraid to offer them so if you're sensitive you might want to find yourself another dumpster but if you are ready to talk trash about some sister wives seeking weirdos Mm -hmm. welcome to this dumpster yeah welcome and if you do like to talk trash along with us go follow us on instagram at reality tv cringe and join us on patreon patreon.com slash reality tv cringe that's where the real party is okay and if you're watching on youtube hello youtubers we love you please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe everything you do really helps us to grow in the algorithm and we thank you in ad thank you all right let's get into this episode not a lot no happened and um i think it was very merrifield intensive yeah and also sherwood intensive definitely yeah definitely that preview though for the oh. rest of the season i was like that Dang. looked hot that looked that good looked lit. yes got me excited yes down in my butt <laughs> um but let's start with the sherwoods because they were the beginning of the yeah show um this week so they're going to go on a second date with that bitch named sarah yeah <laughs> she's not a bitch but like you she know she seemed nice she's yeah. your age i thought she was way older than you i know like, oh she's young yeah she's really young because i think shane is 38 and i think ashley's 34 shane's 38 shane's 38 Shut up. shane's 38 he's no. almost 40 years old wow I can see it, though. You can't? No. I mean, I thought like mid-30s, I guess. But I'm just like, dang, almost yeah, 40? he's almost 40. Shit. Mm-hmm. Shit. Well, they're going to go on a date with Sarah. It's the second date. Shane's going to go meet her already. Yeah. But he says he's got his walls up like yeah. Mary Brown because he's worried from their last interaction with the last chick, Grace. Yeah, he's coming in with that cock block energy a little bit he's not really celebrating the potential of maybe making a connection with somebody that he doesn't know like he's coming into this entire thing with like okay do you check all my boxes i'm looking for your red flags are you ready to commit to us right now even though this is the second time she's even meeting ashley it was kind of weird i mean a little bit but i can also understand where he's coming from because i don't think he's comfortable with any of it Mm -hmm. like when they go to the fucking mini golf place for their weird date at the bowling alley slash bullwinkles, like whatever it was, <laughs> they go mini golfing and like immediately Sarah and Ashley are flirting hardcore laughing so much. And I yeah. think Shane was like really uncomfortable with it. Well, but why? That's the entire premise of what it is that you are faced. doing. You guys are out here fishing for a woman mm-hmm. and that woman is for Ashley. Shane, that woman isn't for you. Yeah. And so... In theory, you would want to see them getting along and having some kind of a rapport Mm -hmm. and having a good time. But the better they get along, the more it seems to irritate him. Oh, for sure. He's like not into it at all. Like he's like watching them flirting, watching them laugh. He's like, oh, I don't know how I feel about this. And then that's when he starts asking like the hard questions like, so Sarah, when do you want to have kids? Uh, are you going to be committed to us? Have you ever been in a relationship like this? Like, let me just ask you all the hard questions mm-hmm. to hopefully push you away. But it doesn't work. Well, it comes off really judgmental, which, by the way, he also came off pretty judgmental with Grace, even though, obviously, Grace was a cunt. Yeah. So I didn't care so <laughs> yeah. much. But, like, Sarah seems like to be a normal young woman who just wants to meet this couple and see if she's down and see if she's into it. At this stage, it's supposed to be casual. Like you can't really, maybe you can, I don't know. But do you really enter into like your first encounter with someone requiring them to have a level of commitment toward you Mm -mm. or else? Shouldn't it just be like, yeah, we're doing miniature golf or we're playing these stupid games and we're just 
checking out the vibe. Vibe check. Vibe check. Uh, that seems more reasonable to me. Oh, for sure. But it yeah. seems like he's coming in wanting to see whether she makes good wife material. Yeah. Which is wild. And Ashley, as usual, is just kind of sitting there mm-hmm. and letting him take control. And she seems like a little put out. Like, can we just lighten it up? And even Sarah's like... Give me some time. I mean, yeah. let me get to know you. I get what you guys are looking for, but I don't even know who you are. Legit. Yeah. And I mean, I can see where Shane's coming from, but at the same time, I do agree with Ashley when she says in her talking head, he's coming off a little strong and it's because he doesn't like watching his wife flirting with another chick. Like that's where I think it's coming from. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's just because of Grace being a be old, big old bitch. I think it's also just he's insecure and now he's like faced with this reality that his wife is flirting with other women in front of him and she's enjoying it and then she's going to end up kissing their issies and shit. Like, oh you know my what God. I mean? <laughs> like I just think like he's like uncomfortable with that reality. But on the other side of that, he's putting so much pressure on this For young sure. lady. Like he's like, we like to move fast yeah (laughs) like when we make a decision we move on that and he also makes an interesting statement somewhere I don't know if it's when they're out or if it's like an interstitial but he's like because of my health issues like we have to move fast oh did you even catch that no it was kind of a throwaway comment in which he's talking about how he wants to make sure that Ashley finds somebody that she's good with because tomorrow is not promised to anyone and because of his health issues like they're very interested in moving at that faster rate and I'm like wait a minute what health issues are you talking about because that's kind of like terminal language yeah like I've got a really big health problem which might mean I'm not here for very much longer which would totally switch up I think the dynamic of Mm. their pursuit of a third person like that would give a lot of context but it was such a throwaway comment and I did rewind it and I listened to it again he did say it and then we have the people on the subreddit who also caught it and they're like what is he talking about what yeah he has some kind of a health issue oh I which is causing him to want to move at a faster clip with these potential suitors that is super weird and that does kind of sound like terminal but that's like bizarre why they're not acknowledging yeah that why then? wouldn't you be talking about this like just be honest about it but maybe it's because it would go against the whole like seeking sister wife narrative because oh we're finding a wife for us to live as a thruple type of a thing but no it's like i'm finding a replacement for me yeah when i want I my i want something. my wife to be happy what the and heck so i want to help her to find somebody what that the she can heck? be happy with once i'm gone that was just that was the vibe that i got i don't know no. about anybody else out there um, but maybe it's not serious. Maybe he has an autoimmune issue that makes Something. him tired a lot. And so he can't keep up with Ashley. <laughs> I don't know. That's why we really needed to have that fleshed out. Wow. But they didn't talk about it. In any event, I really got the feeling with him that I don't think anybody is ever going to be good enough. Mm-hmm. And we see in the preview that he's telling his friend, like, I got a really bad feeling And I'm thinking, like, how could you really get a bad feeling from Sarah? It was just normal, every day, taking her on a date. She seemed entirely pleasant. Like, what is the bad feeling about? I just think that he's always going to be looking for a problem because, as you said, he's really not down with bringing a third person into this relationship. And he just doesn't have the fucking balls to tell Ashley how he feels. And maybe if he did, she would disregard him entirely because she's obviously driving this. Yeah, for but sure. But he's weak sauce, weak dick, and I don't respect it. No, not at all. And maybe when he's talking about how he's got a bad feeling about it, I think it's probably in the context of the fact that Sarah has only been with couples who are interested in threesomes that's what it sounds like she Mm -hmm. hasn't been in like an actual like plural marriage type thing a polygamous thing not even really polyamorous Mm -hmm. it sounds like she's just a third yeah that people call up and they're like hey want to fuck this weekend yeah you want to have some fun this week but i mean even that is more advanced than most people (laughs) like i think most people probably haven't been a third in a quasi polyamorous relationships so like i'm just saying like the door is open a little bit for you shane if you were really interested in this to cultivate a relationship and to maybe teach her what it means to be a third in a relationship but he doesn't seem interested at all he seems much more interested in just judging her right out of the gate oh for sure i because maybe that gives him some semblance of power though like being able to be the sense of authority like oh ashley i don't approve 
I don't think she's good for you. I'm the man of the house, right. even though I'm letting you fuck other people right. and right in front of me, and I'm really not okay with and it. And I'm very jealous about and I'm it. Very emasculated. Not about happy it. about it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's why he's hella judgy. But I mean, I guess we'll see how it plays out. I mean, I thought Sarah was nice. It seems like they have good chemistry, her and Ashley, although I think Ashley is like way more into Sarah than Sarah is into her. Yeah, Ashley but, is weird to me. Dude, she's like weird. And I don't want to judge her because she's pregnant, but I think it's really fucking weird <laughs> that she's dating people seriously yeah. while she's pregnant. Yeah. And again, I'm like, I'm not here to like stand for gender normative roles, but like when I was just dating a whole human in my body, like the last thing I was thinking about was putting myself out there on the dating scene and getting my cookie eight. Right. You know, I was just like, let me just take care of my body and my baby and my existing relationship. It just is very interesting to me. And I, again, I don't want to be judgmental because pregnant people are people, but it's just very strange. And she seems really reserved. Mm, I don't, it's not reserved. She seems so tight lipped, non expressive, mm -hmm. non communicative. There's a very hard edge about her that makes me wonder what the dynamic and the relationship between her and Shane is like when the doors are closed. Mm. She seems like she wears the pants. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And I mean, in defense of the whole pregnant thing, we got a couple DMs on um, Instagram or whatever being like, yeah, it's because when you're pregnant, you're super horny, like yeah. horny AF. And I'm like, that's cool. I can't imagine me being in that kind of a yeah. position, though, because I feel like when I'm like humongo yeah. and I'm like <laughs> craving fucking pickles and your feet are all swollen, no, man, like don't touch me. Let me go to the club. <laughs> <laughs> don't Let me dance me. suggestively at the club <laughs> and pick up some dudes or ladies. No. Yeah. I mean, but that's us and I, yeah. other people are other people sure so ashley feels okay with it and sarah feels okay with it and shane does not feel okay with it no. i mean and if i'm shane too like if i'm gonna try and step into the shoes of a dude like seeing my fully fucking pregnant woman like heavy with child going out there on the dating scene like dude. i would have absolute problems with that so i'm <laughs> yeah. just like shane use your voice right use your big boy words why yeah. are you so scared to stand up to ashley and that is why i question what happens behind closed doors oh maybe she's like mean to him yes she strikes mm. me as kind of mean don't you think yeah but she holds it back yes. because she knows the cameras are on yes that's what i'm smart. saying when i'm like mm. restrained or reserved I could totally see yeah. something like that. Like, and maybe not even like she's mean, like Ariana from VPR, where like she's yeah. like screaming at him or whatever, but like maybe. You're going to get canceled. Be careful. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, Ariana's showed her colors a little bit the last couple episodes, but maybe she's, maybe Ashley is not that kind of mean. Like, maybe she's like hella manipulative. Yeah. Like, maybe he was not even okay with this whole thing to begin with, but she coerced him into being like, no, this is mm -hmm. for me. It's for my identity, and you need to be okay with watching me fuck other people especially women yes and when you think of the fact that she's also a mental health care provider yeah. as a psychiatrist and she knows that her husband has trauma mm -hmm. from when he was in college and he was dating somebody who became a lesbian who was a lesbian and then announced they were a lesbian and how that hurt him to put him in a situation where he could be potentially re-traumatized is a choice yeah like do you really love this guy are you so focused on yourself that you don't give a shit about how this might be hurting him? These are the questions that I have for her. And that's why I am side eyeing the both of them. He's always going to have a problem with whoever she brings home because he was never okay with this in the first place. Facts. Yeah. And he can't use his big boy voice. No. And speak up. Yeah. He's got his walls up. God, cringe. Yeah, I love it. I know. Me too. So great. And then we have the Merrifields, who are everyone's favorites. Oh, my God. And it's like the last day or whatever in Cancun. And this is where both Danielle and Garrick have to basically propose to Natalia. It's like yes. super weird. We start with Danielle, who's got... Uh, okay. Honey. <laughs> <laughs> Honey. I can't. It is so, so weird. And you know, I'm just sitting at the edge of my seat. I've got my raccoon monocle. I'm watching everything she's uh -huh. doing to try and see what her fucking motivation is. I think I saw something, but yeah. I won't jump the gun. Yeah. Well, okay. So Danielle's getting ready to give Natalia her sister necklace that Garrick designed. Which looks like a vagina. I know. I thought the same which thing. Which looks like a vagina. I the same thing. Like, 
literally looks like lips. Like that is all he's focused on. Yes. I have said every single week he is an unconscious person that is completely animated by his carnal desires. Even in the jewelry he is creating. Yes. It's a big old fucking red vagina. <laughs> Somebody tell me different. I know. Prove I literally me wrong. said the same thing. I was watching it with your daughter. I'm like, that looks like a fucking vagina or like lips or something like kissy so lips. So sexual. So fucking and weird. gross. So bizarre. But he made it and it's so special and so amazing. And so Danielle gave this necklace to Roberta. But she rejected it and broke her heart. And so now she's going to give mm-hmm. it to Natalia to show her commitment to natalia yes that was weird well and being sisters because <sighs> she wants to forge a friendship apparently allegedly that's all it is mm-hmm. natalia accepts the weird fucking vagina necklace <laughs> thinks it's beautiful i guess <laughs> yeah. and then they hug this overly long hug and then they pull away and danielle comes back in with a kiss to the mouth mm-hmm and Natalia sees it and she turns away and she's like, no, no kiss. Well, it's weird because Natalia pursed her lips like she was going to kiss her too. But then she's like, no, 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 no kiss. And I'm like, the fuck? Literally last week, I had this whole gay conspiracy about them. Yes. And I was like, Danielle was kind of weird with Roberta. And maybe they had gay vibes. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that's the case because I feel bad for Danielle otherwise. And it would make a lot of sense out of what she's doing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And then we have this moment and it's super weird and nobody addresses it. Like they don't say anything on their talking heads. Like we're uh, not Roberta. Natalia doesn't even say anything in her talking head. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Natalia's hug was really weirdly mm-hmm. intimate with her too. Yes. And she's like caressing the back of her head. And I'm like, are y'all throuples? Mm-hmm. Is it is it for Danielle? I don't, I don't know. know. It's super fucking it weird. It did feel though like Danielle was going in for... A kiss. A smoochy smooch. I mean, I guess a peck on the lips is normal between women. What? But I mean, in, in this, well, but I mean, in this very strange situation, it feels like it would imply a lot more than just friendship and sisterhood if you're over here kissing me on my whole mouth and everything. Uh, and maybe Natalia's feeling the vibe, but then at the last moment, she's like, absolutely not. Like, this is not the right thing to do. I don't know. But that right there gives me some information that I can stew upon Mm -hmm. because I think maybe Danielle has some sexual expectations of these partners that Garrick is going to be bringing in. And that makes sense. It's, it's predatory. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. But now I can understand it, what she's trying to do. She's hoping that these women aren't just friends to her, but also lovers to her because her own husband, who is her lover is such a lahooser. Yeah. It's either that or she's got like repressed homosexuality or something. And she's like trying to have like physical interactions. But these girls are like, no, I just want to fuck your mm-hmm. husband, though. Like that's like it's either one of those things. I don't or know. It's super weird. Maybe Garrick has an expectation of Danielle to be a certain kind of partner Ew. to these women. Maybe that's something he would want to see. Disgusting. I could yeah. totally see that yeah. being that too yeah. because he's such a fucking sex pest mm-hmm. pervert mm-hmm. weirdo. That was just so weird. So bizarre. I watched it again today and I was like, that is still so weird. Like there's nothing in my mind where I can justify anything other than my gay conspiracy. Yeah. Because I'm like, why is she going in for a kiss like I mean, that? we make a lot of fun of you for your conspiracies, but like you're often correct. I, I'm telling you. <laughs> You know, you're off. My correct. gaydar is never wrong. Yeah, that was that was interesting to see for sure. Super weird. But after she gives her the weird pussy lips necklace to Natalia, then <laughs> it's exactly what it was. It was exactly, it's exactly what, what it was. was. It was so bad. Then they have to get ready. And Natalia has to get changed and get dressed to look all sexy because Garrick's got a surprise for her, uh. which is his cringe ass proposal. And then he's like, practicing his portuguese and it's horrible right he's got 12 roses because it's all special nobody cares symbolic to her in brazil i guess he has designed her engagement ring ring, which is like a (laughs) ring that you would buy at claire's for real or at cole's at the jeweler counter for real i mean he said it was a rose it didn't ring. look like a rose no, at it all. Looked like a, I don't know, a zinnia, a <laughs> daisy. I mean, it was like <laughs> really, bad. really taquois. Yes. That was his ring. So he proposes to her. And 
For the life of me, I have no idea why this beautiful young woman who seems intelligent in her own right would say yes to this man, to this Cro-Magnon man, (laughs) to this trog. I know. And like just before the proposal, he's like in his talking head with Danielle talking about how she had a revelation from God to be his wife and stuff. And it was like a supernatural teleportation portal that God put us in. And so I knew she had to be my wife. And so that's how I feel with Natalia. I'm like, you're such a fucking weirdo. Yeah. He's such a fucking weirdo. And so he's like petting her. Well, the story he tells with Danielle is that he's 19. I think Danielle is 15. Something like that. When they're courting. He's like a youth pastor at the time. Yeah. And she's in the youth group. So he's predating and or preying on the young girls in youth group. Let's just call it what it is. And he says that he gets a message or a word from God who seems to talk to him a lot in garages and whatnot. And his message is like, go to Danielle because I told Danielle to tell you something. So he goes to a 15-year-old girl who's besotted and has a crush on him and says, God says, you want to tell me something? What do we think a teenage girl, all hormonal, is going to say? Uh, Yeah, Uh. God said we're supposed to kiss and that you're supposed to marry me yes exactly and so that's why he married her yes and did you see the pictures of him as a young kid with his curly ass hair like this dude still dead in the eyes though still lights on nobody's home in those fucking eyes still a fucking weirdo like he wasn't cute at all i don't get it and like danielle and the talking head is like (laughs) so great (laughs) like still swooning over it and i don't understand i don't get it either walking around in these wife pleasurers what are they called <laughs> wife pleasers wife no? pleasers yeah. all over the mexican condo i'm <laughs> like you are such a you i hate you so i'm not gonna go off well, but i what hate about, him so much he got all dressed up for the proposal did you think he looked handsome no there? i did not with his button up and everything no i did not he looked Those four months pregnant <laughs> no i did not four months pregnant. i find him to be unspeakably <laughs> unattractive well natalia but natalia must like something and i, I think it. it's Called a green card. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think it's like her entree into the U.S. Yeah. And her mother is watching with Danielle, that fucking weirdo, I... from the sidelines with glasses of champagne. Yeah. I'm like, what kind of fresh hell is this? I... What? fresh out list i know i'm like are we really watching like somebody get sex traffic like yes. this is so <laughs> yes we are weird it's so creepy but natalia seems to be <laughs> consenting to it so can't relate yeah and then after the whole proposal then it's like they're in the hotel room or something and they're packing up because they're leaving the next day and danielle's like wrapped up in a blanket and she's like with, with a like, creepy smile on li- like red lipstick on the same lipstick she tried to kiss natalia with yes like really like painted on lipstick acting all coy uh-huh. like i guess it's time for bed garrick what are you gonna do I'm like what's happening right now and then i realize oh he's gonna fuck Natalia Uh and then I'm taken back to fundamentalist evangelical Delia and all the scriptures that I still have memorized in my rotted brain to this day (laughs) and I want to say that there are a lot of scriptures and mandates against fornication in the goddamn bible sorry about that heresy blast me in the bible it says you're not supposed to fuck somebody until you marry them well but garrick said that god said to him that you're married once you're intimate with a woman the bible also says not to add anything (laughs) to the bible of your own interpretation like god himself told garrick in a garage (laughs) and as long as she's committed to me and taken this ring Uh i have every right to hump upon her. Yeah. And now we're married. Because I get to come in. I just. Like I, seriously. Th- I, th- I, it's not cognitive dissonance. It's perversion. Yes. 100%. It's predation. Yes. It's almost criminal. Except for Natalia's consenting. Which is just so And her mother is there watching her do it. I know. And her I mean, mom's there while she's getting fucked. I can't Garrett. even imagine if my child did something like this, I how I would have killed him 10 times over. But like, I would be getting her the fuck out of there and back to Brazil. But the mom wants to come to the US too, I Probably. think. Probably. Yep. Problem. The mom's like, yeah, you got to do this so that we can get to America. Yeah. And hopefully you'll make enough money so you can bring us all. I think America, that's what's happening. Which fucking sucks. It and does that's suck. that's why he's going to these fucking countries because he's a fucking predator and he's a sex pest and he's got to fucking get people somehow i don't get it and then danielle gets out of the bed and leaves 
Garrick and Natalia alone, they turn off the light and kiss, and it's implied that they're fucking the night away, and then she's going to go back to Brazil, and then other things are going to happen, which we'll get to in the preview, but Uh we just said, like, he can't get any other woman, that's why he's going to other countries, but it turns out that he finds somebody in Michigan who is an American who wants to be a part of this shit show, but we'll get to that in the preview. Girl, I don't get it. But Natalia, like, you just gave your cookie to a fucking asshole. Yep. They're immediately going to be back on the dating apps, which by the way, they didn't even get off the dating apps. No. They just deleted them from their phones, right. Natalia. These people are sick. They're very sick. And shocker, spoiler, I'm sure Natalia is going to be not okay with it. No. I'm sure she's going to be so upset because that's how Roberta was too. He would go to Brazil, fuck Roberta and tell her you're the only one like... You know, we'll find other wives later when you come to America, but only when you come to America. And then he'd go to America and he'd go mm-hmm. on dates with other chicks and fuck them. And she got fucking pissed off about it. So she took $10,000. Lies $10, upon lies yes. upon lies. Yes. And fucking Danielle, all delusional after she leaves Is Derek. She? Well, afterwards, she's like, you just have to detach yourself from it. That's just my best friend, you know, going to have sex with some other girl. Like, it's fine. I don't think she's delusional. I think she's intentional. I, I think, think she's hoping to be able to enjoy the spoils of what it is that he's doing. Maybe. After I saw her leaning in for that kiss, I was just like, this is weird. Y'all are weird. And maybe she's the big mama of the house who's waiting for all the women to come to the house. And Yeah. I just, something's very strange and very dark about these people. Very fucking weird. But Natalia, you consented, right? Yeah. So... I mean, and we can't say you're a child. You're 26 years old. Your right. full frontal lobe is is formed. Like you have your whole brain about you and you're making this choice. And so here we are. Now you're going to have to sit in it. Yep. And I'm going to judge you for it. Yeah. And they're <laughs> going to get back to America and they're going to start courting all these other women and you're going to be jealous and unhappy. Yep. I hope, she, so. I hope she takes $10,000 Sorry them about too. it. Me too. <laughs> I'm like, that scam them. Fucking pawn that vagina necklace. Yes, girl. Oh my God, the vagina necklace. And the fucking of what, rose the, ring. The cubic zirconia I that's know. in it that was designed by an elite The jeweler. ruby glass. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> For real. Mm-hmm. So fucking cringe. And then we have the other creepers of the fucking show. They have the creepers of the series, the Ryans. These fucking oh psychos. God. Yeah. Who are in fucking Colorado Despite Stephanie, this mysterious woman telling them, don't fucking come to my house. They show up at her house. Mm -hmm. And apparently this isn't Stephanie's real name. Right. She's a fake name, fake voice even. So she was like, don't even out me at all because she doesn't want to be associated with these creeps. And we speculated about this, I think, last week. Like every single picture they show of her with Stephanie, she's completely pixelated. Uh-huh. Even on the drive up from Texas to Colorado, the highway, the 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 towns are pixelated. Like she wants <laughs> nothing to do with the Ryans. And so I guess Stephanie's a fake name. Her boyfriend Greg also a face name, fake name, and the voice of Stephanie as she's talking to Becky in the confrontation is filled in by somebody else. Yeah. TLC. Yeah. <laughs> so it's crazy. So fucking Becky is at her front door and she's like, yeah, we came anyway, even though you told us not to. And Stephanie's like, why the fuck are you here? Though? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? And she's like, um, because you love us, right? And I want you to be our sister wife uh, and I want you to fuck my husband. And Stephanie's like, mm, no. And he's in the car. He's unwilling to get out of the car to talk to you yeah. himself. He's making me do it. But like, he's right over there. Yeah. Isn't that sexy? He loves you so yeah. much. But I'm here advocating for him because i'm the only one with balls in this family and stephanie's like yeah i'm with greg now (laughs) and i guess like she's been with this guy named greg on and off this whole entire time that she's been seeing the ryans and she's like i'm in love with greg now not you guys well do you remember how in a few like episodes before they were talking about how stephanie couldn't make a commitment to them because her family wouldn't approve and she had a best friend who would also no longer be her friend if she did so. Yeah. Well, apparently this Greg dude is that friend. Yeah. And so he's like, um, you're my legit girlfriend. And so if you go and fuck this couple, we can no longer be together. Ugh. And so that was enough for Stephanie to say, yeah, I, I can't do it. Yeah. Super weird. And Becky starts flipping out Immediately. as she's talking to Stephanie. Like, well, what about us? Have you been fucking Greg? Like, did you give us an STD? Which means that Justin was fucking raw. Yeah. Nasty. He was raw dogging Stephanie. Yep. Like all of you 
are nasty AF for sure. Trash goblins. What I'm like, Becky, ghouls. I'm like, Becky, why are you bitching to her now and saying that she's nasty because she's fucking Greg? I'm like, you guys have been fucking Stephanie this whole entire time. And you're still out here trying to fuck. Like, hello, you should have gotten tested at the beginning. So, and this kind of lends credence to your theory that they're actually just swingers because yeah. Justin's fucking her. There's no commitment. They are not married. Yep. If you're saying this is a spiritual thing that you guys want to do, then there should be more ceremony around these couplings. Like you should have some sort of like an efficient, you should get married. There should be a spiritual marriage. You should have a commitment, but you're just fucking. Well, you're just swinging. And to me, Beatrice... Becky seemed more broken up about it than he did when she's uh -huh. like, I just need someone. Mm -hmm. She's so sad because Stephanie didn't work out because she just needs someone. What's happening with that? I don't know. I'm at my old age, my big fucking age. I don't need anybody. <laughs> I got real. a man. I got a family. I'm not out here looking for fucking girlfriends. That's how I feel right now. And I'm young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't need anybody. No, like don't talk to me Why at are all. you crying about this? I don't know. That's what was I'm... your dream about? Like, were you dreaming she'd move in? Yeah. That you'd get to fuck her? Yeah. Are you, like, what's happening? They probably were a throuple. They probably were fucking together. They were probably all fucking. Yes. I agree. I and agree. And I bet they were. I bet Greg was in there maybe a time or two. And then he's like, no, I'm too These ashamed. These people are weird. They're they're fucking weird no not greg not greg i mean maybe i don't know i ain't judging but becky gets in the car after stephanie slams the door in her face and she and justin's like what happened and she's like i don't want to talk about it it's Why? worst case scenario i don't want to talk you just about drove it. 12 hours <laughs> with your husband and you just got summarily dumped by yeah. stephanie and your husband wants to know what's happening. She's like, let Stephanie tell you. <laughs> Why? She just said she never wants to see you guys again. Yeah, she's not so going to tell your it. husband what's going on. It's so bizarre to me. Super fucking weird. So then because they're 12 hours away from home, they got to get a fucking hotel room for the night or whatever. They get to this Best Western Inn. And <laughs> Justin looked so pathetically Good. sad. And he looked like a sad little frog. Like he's just <laughs> sitting there on the fucking bed like, ooh. I'm sad that the love of my life dumped us again. I'm like, what did you expect? You're fucking weird. Your wife's also weird. So She's weird. from a fucking pedophilic cult. So is he. And so is he. Yeah. And you guys are just bizarre. Very much so. Go find someone and else. And she told you not to come before they left Texas. Yeah. They weren't en route to Colorado when she's like, you know, by the way, I changed my... No. Before they left Texas, she said... Please do not come. I don't want to see you. Yeah. And they left anyway. So y'all are stalkers. Yeah. And you deserve an order of protection. I would not blame Stephanie a bit. Not at all. And like when they renewed her gym membership, I just had a thought. I'm like, were they like trying to find her address or something or like trying oh, to find her contact? God. Because I wonder if she's such a secretive person, would you be telling people where you lived? Like, would you be giving them their address and stuff if you don't want your name or anything out? I'm like, these people are weird. They show up to Colorado, even though she tells them, no, don't come. And then they got to stop at the gym first to renew her membership. Furthermore, the gym, apparently, according to Reddit.com, <laughs> is Orange Theory, okay. which I guess guess is very expensive oh. to the tune of approximately $149 a month. A month? A month. It ain't no Planet Fitness Damn. girl at $9 a month. It's $149 a month. And so for them to pay her membership, I'm like, did you pay for a whole year? Did you pay for maybe just a month? Even a month is like 150 fucking bucks. Wow. Right. So they were, it's like a bribe then. Yes. These oh people are God. creepy. They're so super weird creepy i don't want to see them date anybody because i want yeah no i want every bad thing to happen to them <laughs> i'm like you guys are fucking psychos mm -hmm. and they're swingers probably yes and becky is so invested oh because she's fucking the women too i think so too like they're super weird can we just say that though yeah i would be so interested in a polyamorous show on tlc where everybody's fucking 
Like, why do we need a pretense that just one person gets to fuck? Girl, I mean, speaking of polyamorous shows, you need to watch Couple to Thruple. I know you haven't watched that yet. I have not. You need to fucking watch it. I watched. You said it was so debaucherous, it would be offensive to my sensibilities. Well, I mean, it's like literally softcore porn. Like, I love that shit. Go. I think it's on Peacock. I think it's on Peacock. Yeah, yeah, y'all go watch it because it's like crazy. Because there's literally people getting fingered, (laughs) like in the first episode, and you see titties and everything in the first episode. Yes. Oh my god, let me run to watch that. I'm very excited now. Watch it because it's like all about polyamory, which is and are both interesting both um people in the couple able to hit it uh-huh okay but there's that's like, interesting there's already couples on there that are like not into it like they okay. start you know off strong and they're like yeah like we decided that we want to bring in a third it's gonna be really great for our relationship and then the second that they watch their partner be with somebody else they're like immediately jealous angry they get triggered it's like actually really interesting and that's why it's very dramatic and would make a great television show i just don't know why tlc doesn't make the commitment to follow i know polyamory like why does there always have to be this fake context right. of spiritual marriage yeah with garrick no you're just out here to fuck exactly. and your wife wants to fuck and everybody wants to fuck just say you want to fuck exactly or even like seeking brother husbands which we're still salty about because yes. it's like you guys just lie could have been so much better oh my gosh and i mean it was still interesting i guess but it's like you guys were lying it's because it would never happen no exactly like if you have a regular heteronormative dude and a wife who wants to go bang other dudes it's just very rare i can't well, imagine it maybe there's sneakos out there in their <laughs> cuck chair in the corner that are into yeah. it but i just feel like that's there's not a lot of people no to make a show it's out of a that rarity. even yeah. then i would watch something like that i would love to i would love to watch a show all about cuckolding just be, <laughs> me too just be <laughs> honest be so great just be honest super interesting but whatever Last but not least, we get to the Shibutis, yes. a.k.a. the Sal Houdins or Sal, however you Salah, say it. Salah Houdin. Yeah, whatever. Naeem and Nyla. Yes. And they're having Naeem's mom over for dinner or whatever because they haven't told her anything about what happened with Keisha last episode, which right. was that she ghosted them and dumped their asses. <laughs> and so they bring <laughs> Naeem's mom, Jamila. Who I love. Yeah, Jamila. I wanted to make sure I said it right. Yeah. Jamila of my heart. Oh my God. So fucking based. I know. (laughs) I really like her. She's really fucking funny. It's like they have her sit down and they're like, yeah, so we were going to meet Keisha, but she dumped her asses. And Jamila's like, cool, good. Like, I don't want to meet her anyway. But they were hoping that Keisha would be there in that conversation to to spring on Jamila the mom. (laughs) Yeah. Like yeah. against her wishes and without her consent. Like, She's not into it. No. Why are these people trying to force their polygamist agenda on the mom? It seems really weird to me. I don't know. I think they're trying, like, I think Neem's probably trying to prove to his mom, like, no, it's fine. I want you to be okay with it because you're my mama. Like, I don't know. I think that's really weird. Like, get your daughter trying to do that and be like, yeah, mom, um, you need to be okay with it. You'd be like, bitch, mm-hmm. no. I'm not okay with it. That's cool. I love you. Actually, I would probably be a little more open to her telling me that a very important life decision that she's making like requires my consideration. I would give it consideration. Yes. Jamila, Naeem's mom, doesn't give an inch at any time. (laughs) She's like, fuck no. It's not even Islam. It's not in the Quran. And they're like, it is in the Quran. This is what the Quran says. She's like, I don't give a shit. This woman shouldn't be in your house. Like, I would not be as combative as that. But as I said in our last episode on this, it feels like to me that Naeem and Jamila, his mother, fight a lot. And I find him, his just general vibe, vibe check, check. to be very disrespectful to his mother. Mm -hmm. Maybe she was a very strong, like, iconic person in his youth and he's rebelling against her in his 40s or something but he's very disrespectful to her yeah and she didn't give a shit nope no she didn't give a shit and like we said a couple episodes ago like she knows the kind of man her son is like she Mm -hmm. knows he's just a fucking player and he just wants to fuck other bitches so it's not in integrity it's not because allah told you to do it she knows she sees right through his bullshit and then i think something gets brought up where like they talk about bringing in another wife and like having her live with them. Mm-hmm. And Jamila's like, the fuck? Why? Like, right. why would you want some other chick in here? 
fucking your husband living with you and and Nyla's like yeah I'm, I'm totally cool with it which she's not she's not even gonna be okay when they go on a one-on-one date girl and you expect to move this woman into your house and live with her Mm-mm. and Jamila is trying to make the religious or the spiritual point which is like it's actually not in Islam it's not in the Quran yeah um and I think her point or her specific issue is that their plan is to move this woman into their house versus like getting another house, a Robin Brown um, yeah. house that they can live in and live in that way. Um, so she's trying to quibble about that. And they're just like, we don't care. As long as we're happy, why can't you be happy? And she's like, I'm just never going to be happy with this. It's fucking stupid. <laughs> and then Naeem is like, so you're telling me if we commit ourselves to another woman and we move her into our house, we won't be able to come over to your house for like family meetings or family dinners. And you won't come over to our house for the same reason. And she's like, yeah, that's what I'm saying right now. That's how I feel. Yeah. And again, love a boundary. I she's mean, like, you guys do whatever y'all want to do. But for me and my house, we ain't doing all that. No, ma'am. You can't make me do all that. I thought that was pretty based. I'm like. And you- it's fair. It's valid. <laughs> yes. Because I'm like in the context of polygamy or whatever, if your daughter and I came to you, yeah, you'd probably be open to it or whatever. We talked about this. But like if say she came up to you with like some outlandish crazy thing that went against all of your principles as a human being you'd be like really no you wouldn't be okay with it no i mean absolutely but yeah so in the context of what we're discussing which is relationships yeah. and polygamy and love it's like, like i'm way more open on those things but if you're talking about murder like mom i need you to help me to dismember <laughs> and hide this body i would still do it but i would like have a problem with it we'd have to have discussions about it yeah well like so then do you think that jamila is being like valid in her in her belief like this like this is her son that she's talking about and be like no i would not ever see you ever again if you brought another bitch into this like do you think that's okay to do as a i would mom? never do that as a mom i personally wouldn't do that as as a parent yeah um so she's coming across as very judgmental of their alternative lifestyle and their life choices but at the same time she has every right to do that and it also feels to me like they keep shoving this shit down her throat yeah like, they know she doesn't like it so why are we having yet another meeting with jamila at your house where you're talking about something she doesn't want to fucking talk about right you're basically provoking her and antagonizing her so she does have a stronger boundary why yeah like i mean are you proselytizing your way of life mm, maybe. for what reason to seek Just, validation i guess maybe because they know it's wrong like maybe he knows it's wrong intrinsically and so he's like trying to get his mom to be on board with it because his dumb wife is even though she's not really into it i don't know it's super weird she seems to be she seems to be the one who instigated she says it was her idea i don't believe it to bring in somebody else i don't know to me at the core of it it feels like this is a way for naeem to rebel against his mother to Mm. kind of stick it to her because he's got some kind of a deeper issue with her that's weird that he does not know how to articulate and go to therapy his mom seems like a hard woman yeah they probably have a very lengthy history (laughs) and she seems down to fight (laughs) so i'm like this is just this is just negative. Yeah. yeah. So negative. why would you want to incorporate her into it other than for the, the TV and the production value of it? And maybe that's all they have going on for them too is like just them fighting with his yeah. mom the whole entire season because they don't have anybody else to date him. I don't know. But that leads us into the preview. Yes, honey. Which we do see Naim and Nyla go on a date. And I'm not sure if th- this isn't with Keisha, I, is I it? I thought that was Keisha. So I don't. I guess it's not so it's Keisha. A new chick. So how much time has passed? Have they been courting her at the same time? If it's not Keisha, it's just very odd that they're already ready to commit to somebody else. Yeah, super weird. But like at the date, Naeem's like, yeah, I want to take this further. I want like, wasn't he talking about intimacy? It was about, it was the subject was one-on-one dates. And this woman was saying like, yeah, I, I'd like to have some time alone with Naeem to kind of explore this relationship. And so Nyla's true. like, yeah, I'm not okay with that. And Naeem is like, I'm ready to go. I'm okay with that. And this is where we have Nyla outside on that night saying, this is offensive to me. Like, I'm not okay with that. Yeah. Well, Mm, you opened the door. You kicked open that door. mm -hmm. Your husband's walking right through that door with this willing woman, which you set this shit up, Mary Brown. Yep. You set it up. That's what I don't understand. Cope harder. (laughs) For real. Cry more. (laughs) Inhale the copium. Yep. And then we have the Davis family 
April and Jennifer are telling Danielle, hey, um, I know we said two episodes ago that we were going <laughs> to wait to date for we your choose feelings. We you. We choose you, but we're ready to date now. It's been two weeks, so we think that's long enough time. We're going to bring in this chick named Jasmine. Honey, Jasmine takes off her robe or whatever oh to God, reveal her, her uh, bikini, gets in the hot tub, and Danielle is not feeling it to the camera. This Jasmine person says, I'm coming in here to recreate this family. Which was that like, mean? She's like, I'm coming in. Sh- she's saying, I'm coming in to change the whole fucking thing. Oh, damn. And Danielle sees her for who she is. It is implied. Yeah. And she's like, you cannot just come up in here and be toxic. I'm not going to let you be toxic. And of course, she's crying. Yeah. Like a baby. Always. Yeah. But um, Nick seems to be into it. And he's kissing all up on this Jasmine girl. And everybody seems to be okay with it. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening here? You just told Danielle you're willing to give her space to acclimate and adjust to what the fuck is happening. I want to know how much time has passed. I know. Before they're bringing on this clout goblin. Because it seems really sudden with the editing and stuff. So I'm like hoping for Danielle's sake, it's been a few months. Mm -hmm. But I'm just like, this is weird. And I don't know if this chick is also fucking the women. I feel like they're all a bunch of orgy having people and that's fine. Just be honest about it. I don't know. Seems very (laughs) weird. And then Justin from the Ryans is going on a date with another lady and she's like, "Uh, I don't want to share my man with anyone. And he's like, okay. I mean, he's just desperate. Like, who is this woman? Sad frog. And like, why would you go out on a date? I I mean, she just does not seem to be into it at all. Justin, no. you're such a l- over. Wait, you don't think he's attractive? No, I do not. <laughs> Fundamentally, I do not. I'm sorry to body shame him, but he looks like a sad frog. He really does. And then we have Natalia saying it's been a while since yeah. Garrick and Danielle went back to the States and Garrick is already dating <laughs> another woman. A Muslim woman. A Muslim. a Muslim woman from Michigan. Yes. Who's coming down to Colorado yeah. to hang out with them and smooch with Garrick. And I'm like, okay, I'm still over here being an evangelical from 20 years ago, trying to reconcile how your Christianity is okay with being with a Muslim. I mean, and personally, I'm ecumenical and interfaith. I can see it. But like, you're writing so hard for Jesus. Right. Like, how does that work when you're with somebody who's a Muslim, but it doesn't matter. No. Because as long as she has a vagina, he's down for it. Yes. He's like, I think you're pretty. I think this is great. I think you're so beautiful. And who's this bitch from Michigan? I know. Who's willing to put herself out here like this. I don't And make an ass out of herself. I'm getting drunk. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm getting drunk and I'm yelling. Well, I wonder if Danielle's going to try and kiss this chick too, if she's sexually attracted to her as well. But I'm like, I still don't understand. Pussy. Oh, God. God. With the pussy necklace. Oh, just move that pussy necklace down. Maybe I should um, get that for me and your daughter. We should wear that around more power to you girls i love you and every choice you make i know you're such a nice person but no i just uh, this is so weird and i don't understand how all these women in this world can look at garrick Garrick and be like yeah you're so handsome i want to marry you she wants to be on television that's why she's a clout goblin at least with natalia she's trying to get america to make to make a better life for herself and for her mother but like whoever this chick from michigan is she just wants to be on tlc i don't get it (laughs) There's better ways to get on TLC than or to be famous. Dignity. Um, I don't know. I love it though. I mean, I'm I do eating too. it up. I'm gonna watch it. I can't believe we're going straight from Natalia to some other chick. Bring it on! <sighs> I'm sure she's gonna be so unhappy about it. They're gonna break up. Danielle's gonna cry again. It's gonna be great. Yep, I'm. I'm here for it. Me too. Yeah, I love it. Well. Any final thoughts about this episode? I mean, I do personally, I know I just asked you, but I'm going to answer this. Um, I do see an intersection, a world where both Robin Brown and Garrick Merrifield could design jewelry together oh, for sure. and make so much money. My sister wife's closet could get a revamp. Yeah, like they could become an MLM, <laughs> can sell it. God, the most tacky, both of them oh make the most tacky, awful Most jewelry. expensive, cheap-ass jewelry ever. And they think, they think they're doing something. I like, mean, here's this beautiful necklace. Isn't it beautiful? No, it looks like a vagina. <laughs> a bleeding vagina. A sparkling, bleeding vagina. Well, I'm like, there's two hearts in it. So I'm like, but he wants five wives. So is he going to add more in there? Or is he going to make their own vagina necklaces with their own colors to it? Oh, God. 
I mean, I just can't with this dude. It's I can't great. with this family, but it's it's fantastic. It is fantastic. And I'm enjoying it. Me too. We're going to be back next week to continue this Seeking Sister Wife conversation. Now, is there anything else, Beatrice, that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons? Why we got them here? Well, if you love this podcast, I sure hope that you leave us a glowing five-star review on your favorite podcast platform and make sure you subscribe to our channel on youtube if Mm -hmm. you haven't done that already please and thank you so much and we will be back later this week to talk the valley and vanderpump rules and until then please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out Bye. bye guys